What is up, MMA fans? This is Tudolante for Shorter.com. And today I have the pleasure to talk with UFC lightweight fighter, Mr. Joe Salecki. Hello, Joe. How are you today? Good, man. It's going good. Uh, everything's good. Finishing up a hard day up at uh, GMO in North Carolina, up in, uh, outside of Charlotte and Belmont with Jeff Jimmo and all the tough guys up there. And now we're making our way back to uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. So we got like a three plus hour drive. Um, and that's something we do every week in camp. So, um, we're going to speak about your, you know, training camp in just a, a minute. But before that, I saw on your Instagram stories that you watched Goodfellas last night. We are recording uh, this interview a few hours after Ray Liotta sadly passed away. Um, what do you like about that movie? Uh, every, everything, but, uh, Yeah, I lo- I'm from the Northeast, so like I, I like movies like that. Um, I love Sopranos, uh, which obviously is a TV show, but you know, same concept. Uh, I love Goodfellas. My boxing coach Chris Gowd is like a mafia movie and TV show like aficionado, so that's something we bond over a lot too. But uh, you know, anytime I see it, it's hard not to watch it, even though I've seen that movie a bunch. But uh, especially last night, I looked for it because Ray Liotta died. I was like, well, what a better way to pay tribute than to watch Goodfellas? And it's always a good excuse to watch. I think any excuse to watch that movie. So uh, I like it. I think it's funny. You know, it's funny, but it's also a great story. There's action. It's a great movie. So uh, you can't go wrong. And they're all Italian. I'm Italian. So I like that too. Uh, is that your favorite mafia movie or is there another one? Uh, yeah, I think so. I like Bronx Tale a lot too, but uh, that's more a lot more about the, the kid than it is the mafia, I guess. So yeah, definitely. Definitely good fellows out of all of them, but uh, there's a bunch I haven't seen yet still too. But uh, the ones I've seen, of course, I love Sopranos, which is a TV show, but you know that's that's probably my favorite favorite out of all of it, just because uh, there's so much more content. You can watch six seasons worth, so uh, that's awesome. The, do you like watching movies during fight week, or uh, do you do something else? You know, in general. Yeah, I like it. You know, and uh, pretty much, you know, with these quarantine fights, I guess we're not really quarantined anymore out there, but we'll be on the, you know, the little campus on the hotel. So, um, you know, that's really all there was to do the past, you know, year and a half, two years fighting out there in Vegas. So, uh, yeah, it's a great time to binge some TV shows or watch movies. You know, I love movies. I love TV shows. But, you know, with training and then, you know, traveling to train and then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a father. So I got, I got other stuff going on, teaching classes and stuff, too. So, Between all that, you know, maybe I watch an episode of something at night with my wife or something, but other than that, we don't get to watch a ton of movies and TV anymore. So it's a good time to, you know, have some downtime, catch up with some stuff we haven't seen. And uh, it's a good way to pass the time during fight week, too. So, yeah, kind of looking forward to that. It's always a good time. We always discover something we want to binge or some movie we haven't seen. And, uh, you know, it's fun to do. So it, it passes the time. Um, listen, we are talking right now since you are scheduled to face Alex Da Silva Coelho on June the 4th. Um, you told me that you are still training at uh, GMO. Um, how was your camp in preparation for this fight? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, camp's been awesome. You know, I train in a couple different locations. So I live in Wilmington, North Carolina, and our home gym there is Salty Dog Jiu Jitsu. Uh, that's where I'm headed back to now. You know, and uh, I'll finish up camp there tomorrow, my last hard day there with uh, John Salter and all the guys there. And like I said, every week we travel up to our head coach, Jeff Jimmo, and the guys up here. And, uh, you know, typically I train at Fitness Edge MMA as well in Myrtle Beach, which is an hour and a half the other way. But uh, one, at least once or twice a week for sparring. Uh, I train with a couple guys there, Cody Jones, Jordan Weeks, Brendan Hyde, because um, there's some good sparring partners my size that we don't necessarily always have in Wilmington. Uh, but this camp, they've been renovating for their, their new uh, – like they're going to do a grand reopening here, I think, next week. So, uh, you know, they've been coming to me this camp. But So it's kind of where I train all, all, all year long. But, uh, yeah, camp has been awesome been great um you know everybody's going to tell you every time it's the best camp it's ever been and the best they've ever been but uh truly it is for me so it's, it's been it's been awesome um genuinely the healthiest i've, probably, I've ever been like super injured going into a fight but even you know down to like little bumps and bruises the healthiest i've been and the hardest i've been able to push the entire camp so uh it's been fantastic i'm really really grateful to be winding down here but i think you know outside of slipping on a banana peel tomorrow god forbid uh yeah i'm going to the fight that close to 100% as you possibly can. Uh, who is going to be in your corner? Uh, so our head coach, Jeff Jimmo out of Charlotte, who we just talked about. Uh, John Salter is my coach, teammate, friend. And then my training partner is actually sitting right here with me, Zach DeLeon, who's a great training partner of mine, main sparring partner. Um, and his corner before, 
uh, in my Austin Hubbard fight and uh, cornered him and vice versa. So um, big addition too, because I'll have that person that's a my, closer to my size to like actually, you know, get those like realistic looks in the back room with, but also, uh, you know, who knows your game better than the person standing across from you sparring all the time. <laughs> so even though coaches are really into my game, there's probably some things that he knows about my game that they don't just from like seeing how it looks, you know, when it's coming at you um, and probably knows where I'm weak too in certain areas. So uh, those would be the three on fight night. Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting what you're mentioning uh, right now that you are actually bringing one or one of your sparring partners, if not your main sparring partner, uh, you know, in, in your corner. Since you told me that he knows your tendencies, he knows your game very well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and uh, has been in a lot of, you know, uh, is a great mind for fighting, too. So, like, uh, you know, the, the first half of the week, It'll be just me, John, and Zach, because uh, Jeff will be getting Brian Barberina ready for his fight with Robbie Lawler. So he'll come out the second half of the week. So, uh, you know, can hold pads for me. And, you know, when we work in Wilmington uh, is a big is a big help with like my preparation as well as John. Um, so they know my game, you know, so they can keep keep my fight week going and hold pads and. Uh, so that will, uh, all the weeks this camp so has been there when when our coach there is coaching me um in my kickboxing sessions in wilmington we've been doing them together as well so uh you know whatever our coach there alan branch is telling me we're on the same page with that and uh you know um me him and john salter train together every single day so we're all on the same page with that so it's a it's a real cohesive unit we have so i feel really confident going out there not just it's not like i'm at a mega camp where i'm going out there with a coach that i get to work with you know 15 minutes out of the week and then he sends me off to drill it it's like I know these guys, I care about these guys. We're, we're good friends too. So uh, it's just a good feeling when you go into the fight with guys you really, really trust with your life, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I I can only guess that, but I, I totally, you know, relate to, to what you're saying here. Um, you're coming off a narrow split decision loss to Jared Gordon in October. Uh, what do you think, you know, went wrong th that night, considering that you started that fight really strong, you know, and then it seemed that you are a little bit slowed uh, down your, your piece? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, it, it, the plan wasn't to put him down on the ground very early like that. It just kind of happened. And then the second, since it was, you know, for lack of a better word, it was pretty easy in the first. Uh, I kind of got sidetracked and started trying to do that again. That wasn't the game plan, you know? Um, so I got stuck underneath him in that second round and uh, wasn't super active getting up because there was no space, you know? He was sprawled out, uh, like completely sprawled out. I've actually never really seen a lot of guys doing that. Like his hips were like sprawled into me and his legs were back, like not trying to pass or anything, which is fine, but he was landing good shots and being active. So it wasn't like we should have been split up, but uh, no space to get up. And then in the third, I thought I was actually pretty active. So uh it was kind of a crap shoot in the third. And uh, yeah, I mean, so many things that I could have done and should have done and all that, but anything to say is going to come off like an excuse or taking away from him, you know, but uh, definitely just his night. And I think ultimately him getting his hand raised, uh, you know, probably served me pretty well because had I won, maybe I wouldn't have made some of the changes I've had to make or look at my game or, you know, whatever it's been. And, uh, you know, losing is always going to bring new things to the surface that you're going to work on and come back better for the next one. That's what we've done. So uh, ultimately, while it stinks, and I, I'm one of the most competitive people you'll probably meet, and losing does not sit well with me, um, I can see the value in it and, and how much it's you know kind of been a blessing in disguise uh, moving forward. So I'm excited to make the corrections and come out there on June 4th, a better fighter. Every week we see one or more questionable decision decisions coming from the judges. Do you believe that you know your, your loss or that split decision um, was one of them was questionable in your opinion? No, I mean, I think anytime you have a close fight, uh, someone's not going to be happy. Right. Uh, I think my coaches thought we had it, but that's cage side, you know, there's excitement, there's adrenaline, there's this, there's that. Um, if you go back and watch it, I, I watched it a couple of times. I'm so biased. It's hard for me to tell, but I, so I biased the other way. I watch it and go, Oh, you definitely got it. You know, cause like I should have done better than that. Um, I am better than that. Um, but no, it was not one of those things where I don't think he had the right to be too. I mean, of course you're gonna be excited when you win. I'm not saying that, but he can't be like, yeah, we got it, you know, clear cut. And for me, I can't be like, 
man, that's, I should have got it. Like, uh, no, I should have done more, you know, one more takedown in the third. And we're not having this conversation about coming off a loss, you know? So if I wanted it that bad. I should have made something happen and forced an opening. So um, we got into kind of a spar in the third round. I don't think the pace, I mean, the pace low for both of us, but I was, I was still throwing hard. I had good pop. I had, I was fighting all of his takedowns. Like we just got into like this spar mode where he was throwing, I throw, he throw, I throw. We're just kind of having fun, but having fun's like a clear cut win rounds. You know, there was no, uh, there was no urgency from either guy. I don't think. And uh, that's the problem when you get in that flow where you're just kind of, you know, take one, give one, take one, give one or whatever it is. So no, if I wanted it that bad, I should have, you know, put him against the fence, put him down or, you know, set up my takedown attempts better. Or, you know, I was landing hard, a couple hard right hands. I should have followed him up with something or set him up better. And uh, maybe we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't be talking about it, but ultimately if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be probably, probably me, coming off a win would lose to me coming off a loss right now, because I think I've made some really good changes that uh, have ultimately made me a better fighter. The card on which you're fighting is headlined by the clash between uh, Zarzino Rosenstruck and Alexander Volkov. May I ask your pick for that fight? Yeah, you know, I think they're both great fighters. Um, I haven't watched a ton of them, but I, I've been on a car with Rosenstruck before and uh, have seen Volkov. But uh I think I'll pick Rosenstruck just because he's so darn powerful. You know, I think going tough, I it was one of those hard shots that he throws, but uh, I'm not confident in that pick. I you could go either way, but uh, you know, at first glance, that's what I would think is I'd go with him. And what about a prediction for your fight? Yeah. You know, no, no prediction. There's no anticipation. You know, for, for me, I always picture, the hardest fight possible, you know, having to come back from some kind of adversity, having to get tired, having to push out of, uh, you know, maybe being down a round or two rounds. Or, but the big thing that we've done this entire camp is, uh, well, we've done a lot of things, but, you know, uh, having those fresh sparring partners on me, having those looks where, like, I'm just being, you know, pushed to the breaking point, having to grind through adversity over and over again. And uh, the big thing I've been saying to, to the coaches is, like, man, we're never out of a fight. Like, I, you know, fresh guy in the third round on sparring, and I'm pulling rabbits out of my hat still. So, uh Yeah, I just think uh, for me, I know, I know that for me, I can't, I can't anticipate what he's going to do, but I'm going to come out there to, you know, scratch and claw my way to a win any, any means necessary, you know. We know the things that we need to, you know, really focus on to have a smooth performance, but no matter what happens, I know that outside of something crazy, I'm going to be standing in his face, putting the pressure on and looking to grind him away and, and looking for a finish, you know. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm not a big visualizer of this and that and going, I'm going to do this and this is going to happen because – It's not really how fighting works, you know, but uh, I, I do see myself outside of anything crazy, putting that pressure and looking to make him fade. And then trying, if he makes a mistake, I will definitely be there to capitalize. If not, I'll gladly grind my way to a, a 15 minute decision. Have you already thought about your walkout song? Uh, yeah, so I've, I've only used a few in the past. Um, and I'll, I'll use one I've, I've kind of used for a few fights now. It's called uh, Bury My Bones by Whiskey Myers. So, uh, yeah, we, it comes on a lot in training and, uh, I like that band a lot and uh yeah it's a good song it's kind of exactly how i feel going into a fight where it's talking about uh you know if if things go wrong here's the instructions like if i don't make it back type deal and i really think for me that's the best mentality for me to have going into a fight is like i'm out here to come back with my shield on it you know and that's exactly how i feel going into this fight and uh you know the fights where i haven't walked out that maybe i didn't feel that way but uh that's exactly the mentality we're going out there with In addition to competing uh, on the upcoming UFC uh, Fight Night event, do you have any other plans for the summer? Uh, no, you know, I'm just going to, uh, you know, God willing, we come out of this fight healthy, get back in the gym, keep training. That's what I love to do. You know, I love to train and to teach uh, jiu-jitsu and everything else too. Uh, got a fighter that I work with, some Juan, Lu Juan Lopez, who's going to be looking to fight. Uh, he's fighting amateur here in the Carolinas. So hopefully uh, – You know, he's been gracious enough to kind of wait out, wait out my schedule because we're waiting for me to get a fight. And now we're looking to get him one. That way I can kind of go be there for him. And, uh, yeah, just some of my other teammates have fights coming up. Cody Jones, so I'm going to be a sparring partner for him as long as I'm healthy. And then uh, just hang out with my family this summer, get back in the gym, and wait on the call again, you know. Um, wouldn't mind doing some grappling just to stay busy. That's kind of what I did between these fights with some, uh, you know, grappling super fights some tournaments and stuff like that just to keep the sword sharp. I realized how much fun that is again to do. So, uh If that comes up, maybe something like that. But other than that, we live on the coast, going to the beach on the weekends and uh, staying in the gym and hanging with the family. That's pretty much it. So um, no vacation for you uh, on this summer? Oh, 
I don't know. This uh, usually after every fight, we go somewhere. Nothing extravagant, you know. Um, but we always take a couple of days, my wife and I, and then since the babies come, also her, and we'll go to somewhere, you know, within a, a short enough drive. But it's like a little getaway. But uh, this time we are knock on wood, uh, trying to move into our first house that like we'll be buying. So uh, we're just gonna work on getting that ready. I got a lot of projects for when I get home because right after I get back from the fight, we're supposed to move. So uh, I'll be painting walls and who knows what else but uh so that'll be that'll be my vacation i'll be getting back and i'll have the honey do list to do and get the house ready for us to move into but uh and i'm not super handy so all our friends got to help me and that's gonna be a grind too so it's one grind back home to the next one so uh it'll be fun though so yeah that this time no special plans like that but we live at the beach so every weekend's a vacation if you get out to as long as the weather's good you go on the beach and get some sun and uh you're ready to go on monday Joe, I was about to, to let you go, but you mentioned grappling and uh, you just, uh, you know, reminded me that you submitted actually Donna Cerrone in uh, a grappling match in December. Um, you told me that you like competing in grappling, um, you know, challenges. Um, as far as I know, you started grappling since six, uh, since you're very, very young. Um, So at the moment, do you, do you don't you have any plans for you know a grappling return or I don't know grappling event like the the Fury one? Uh, nothing set, just because I'm so focused on the fight, you know. But uh, there was uh, I did Fury grappling where I grappled Cowboy, and uh, they were actually having another event. I think it might be this weekend, honestly. Um, so if I didn't get a fight, I was going to try to do that again. But obviously, fighting takes precedent over all of that. But yeah, anything that comes up, uh, I'm going to look to hop on, you know, because. Uh, I would have not done that a little while ago. Like I'd be like, oh, I'm focused on fighting. I'm in the UFC. I'm not going to grapple. And then a couple of these things came up and I, and I had lost the fight. You know, it was close, but I didn't feel like I could have done a little more and uh, left a bad taste in my mouth. I was like, man, let me just do anything to compete and try to get a win, you know? Um, so I was so hungry. So we did ADCC trials. Then we did, uh, I did the, the team event where I was on Team CFFC at the Fight Pass Invitational. Then the Cowboy match, which was a blast. And uh, I actually did one other one with a little team event here with uh, my teammates, Wyatt Hopkins and uh, uh, we call him Big Nat, but uh, Matt Williams out of Myrtle Beach. We kind of made a little team and did like a quintet, but it was three of us and we won as well. Uh, and it was just a blast. I had a fun, I had a lot of fun. So uh, I remembered how much I like to do that. So yeah, if I know I'll have a little break between fights again, I definitely like to hop on something. But uh, the big thing for me after this fight is actually I'm starting a, a grappling promotion in a tournament for like, uh, you know, beginners, intermediate and advanced people. And then also like super fights at night for some of the more advanced belts um, here in Wilmington, North Carolina. And uh, that'll be going here. Uh, we're looking at either the second or third week of August to have that first event. So I'm locking everything in right now for the venue and everything. And then going to have that. And I uh, already have everything set for that, the mats and all that. It's called All In Grappling. If anybody is able to go check it out on like Instagram or anything, throw us a like. All our news will be posted there. And uh, maybe, you know, maybe I'd even grapple on that myself if I could find, you know, enough help to get everything set up. Maybe after the first one, start having some some bigger names in there. It'd be cool. So we'll see what we can do with that. And uh, yeah, so whatever comes up, I'm, I'm definitely open to it. Do you have any last messages? No, I just appreciate everybody that supports me, man. We talked about, uh, you know, a lot of it, you know, between the gyms and the coaches, uh, teammates. Uh, I really couldn't do it without them, you know. And like I said, we're really lucky where we have a tight-knit unit. Um, and it's been a great camp because of that. You know, I'm, I'm not only pushing myself every day, but also enjoying the process, which is huge. Um, You know, when you go to a fight feeling that way, I mean, you're happy to be there, you're happy to perform, and you're excited. So I, I feel that way. I want to thank my family, my wife, and my daughter. Um, and all, you know, they're just, they're, they're everything. And that's, you know, if I don't have them to go home to, like, it doesn't matter. I can have the best day of training, the best fight, all of that. And, uh, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. I'm going home to nothing and uh, getting to go home to them and go out and fight for them. It's amazing. So uh, I thank them and just all of our friends and family who are uh, such a big help during these training camps. You know, I always say that. Uh, It's really tough to get these training camps going because, you know, we don't just go to work during the day or just at night or anything like that. It's, you know, I have a split schedule and my wife works too. So we've got to like, you know, there's times where I can be going back to the gym, but, you know, someone's got to babysit my daughter or something like that. And uh, we have so many friends and family that are willing to step up. So uh, they're a part of training camp too. You know, maybe they don't spar with me or grapple with me, but that's a big help as well. So I just want to thank everybody like that. That helps. And uh, everyone that supports me, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, I appreciate all the support from everybody. Joe, thank you again for giving me a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with your upcoming fight, and hopefully I will hear again from you in the future, man. All right. Thanks so much, man. Take care. Have
Have a good rest of the day. Have a nice one.